If you're trying to maintain your privacy on the internet and you need a solution, I have the solution for you. Just before we go into the demonstration, how about I name the program we'll be talking about today, and it is Tor. We're going to be using the Tor browser plugin, which you can go and get yourself from torproject.org. So torproject.org. Download it. Within Ubuntu, it will ask you if you want to open it with the Archive Manager. Do so. When it opens, drag that file to your desktop. Let's get to the demo. We're going to presume you've already downloaded the Tor browser, extracted it using the Archive Manager, and dragged it to your desktop. So these instructions will be related to the desktop in the location of the folder. Of course, if you have listened to my last two episodes, you will know what I'm talking about when I refer to specific commands. So, to load the terminal, Control alt t will load up the terminal we usually load up directly in our profile directory, which means we don't have too far to go. Type in CD space capital D for desktop and the rest of the word of desktop and click enter. Now we need to get the name of the folder. So we type in LS gives us the contents of this desktop. You can select it to copy, right click and select copy. Now type CD space right click your mouse again this time selecting paste and type in enter you're now in the tor browser folder if you type ls again that will give you the contents now in my case in this video the folder in question we want to start start tor browser is actually highlighted green in order to start it dot backslash start tor browser with hyphens in between of course you can always copy and paste then click enter it will authenticate Tor and we are not connected and we just wait a little bit more and the browser of theirs will actually load all by itself the browser they use is called Aurora now once it loads let's put this full screen it will detect if you've done it correctly, and in their case, congratulations, your browser is configured to use Tor. Now, to show you what a website may look like, we're gonna try running one of mine. So, tqaweekly.com, our host website, uses a blip.tv player, which is based in Flash. As I'm about to tell you right after this demonstration, Flash is disabled by default. The page is now loaded. Bear in mind, of course, that all Flash, Real Player, basically any browser plugin or add on should be, and will be in this case, disabled or not even installed by default, with the exception of the HTTPS everywhere. So I hinted at it during the demonstration and I will actually explain what the Tor project, something I'm not part of by the way, wants me to say about their program that will make it safer and more beneficial to use. So let's get to it. One, use the Tor browser bundle. It's number one on their list. Number two, they have a browser for you. Don't add anything to it and don't activate anything. So Flash, Real Player, any other multimedia thing like QuickTime, don't activate them. These programs can be, how do we say, manipulated to give your real IP address. They have one plugin, it's HTTPS everywhere. That's the only plugin they want in there. Number three, and the reason why HTTPS everywhere is there, whenever possible, use a secured version of the websites you like to visit. Now I know none of my websites have it, but you're not entering any personal information in there. But things like Facebook and Twitter and Google all do. 
Another thing they really want you to remember is not to open any documents you download through the Tor network. So PDFs, docs, I'm even going to say any type of multimedia or application, don't open it, at least not while you're connected to them. And certainly not before you scan it with an antivirus. Now, this is specifically dealing with bad guys. Use of bridges and getting other people to join in and use Tor, which is why you have various podcasts like mine telling you what Tor is. So a bridge allows you to connect somewhere else other than inside your network to use Tor. You'll still have the Tor application in your computer, you will still run it, and it will still connect to the Tor network, it just won't connect directly to your computer. You would be brought to another point where you will enter through their gateway there, and continue through the internet to show up somewhere else geographically. That is the use of a bridge. Now, if you want to use Tor from your computer without the use of a bridge, that requires that you get other people to use the application in which this case means security through obscurity. So that means you have to get your friends to use the software, your family to use the software, and of course the Tor browser bundle is fairly simply used, download, open, launch, and that's it. Now the last thing, and I separated it out from their third point, and this there is a very specific reason, it's referring from the use of torrent programs. I'm going to add in audiovisual programs like instant messengers and video games because they all have one thing in common, it's the UDP protocol. At the beginning of the internet, they actually created two protocols, TCP and UDP. TCP is like the good boy. He asks permission and tells you when something is done. So one internet application on your computer sends out a permission request to a server, a software on a piece of server, and or another computer anyway. And it says, okay, send. And then you send out packets and it replies, I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it. And then it builds up the file and creates the file at the other end in one piece. That is TCP in blatant newbie English. UDP is different. As in, you're expecting the other place to actually accept the file. And you're not asking for permission and you're not waiting for a reply. You're just sending it out. And this is perfect for video and audio and video games and even torrents because that means you can send traffic from multiple areas and as long as they get into the right order, when they get into the port, they will actually be converted into the media that needs to be actually sent into a stream in order. What happens if something strays out of place and comes in at the wrong time? It's ignored. So video or audio that has parts of it not showing up or not coming in at the same time has artifacting, whether it's graphically or audio with little sounds that are bizarre, but those packets are ignored. What is dangerous about that protocol is it gives away your real IP address. Whether you like it or not, it does. Of course, if you want to get any of this information that I just gave you today, you can either go to the Tor Project website at torproject.org or to tqaweekly.com. Don't forget to subscribe, share, and like, and of course, you can always share your questions, comments, stories, or suggestions at ask at tqaweekly.com or directly on our contact form on our website. Of course, we do have a newsletter, various amounts of merchandise that are used to support our show, and all the show notes of every single episode are there. So anything you need is right on our website. I include all the sources in my show notes whenever I have any sources that I use. Of course, next week I'll be talking about what to do with your username and password in order to make the black hat hacker's life completely miserable and explain how to navigate on the internet and what to do with various kinds of data in order to make your life a little bit simpler and less worrisome. I know there's been a lot of hackers attacking various services for at least for the last better part of a year or two and it's starting to get really popular and you want to really protect all your information like your credit cards, your usernames, and you don't want them going around just guessing which accounts are. I'm gonna explain what to do so that if you ever have one account compromised, not everything's compromised. That's what I'll be talking about next week. Of course, have a great day, stay safe and online, 
and let's all see you next week. I can't speak anymore. Have a nice day.